oiling the machine. I've just got my new machine, unboxed it, or I've been using it for quite some time and it's due for a little bit of maintenance. So I need to oil it. I'm going to start by removing the free arm cover. Open the hook cover to expose the bobbin as well as the hook race. Remove the front loader bobbin by gently unhinging it and removing it from the machine. Open the hook race ring holders. One holder, the next holder. The hook race ring simply slides out. No need to pull, it's not a rough motion. And then of course, remove the hook itself. With one drop of oil, I'll be able to cover the entire back portion over here. I'm also going to add an additional drop of oil onto my needle bar. Remember to bring your needle back up into the highest position before proceeding. Replace the hook, the hook race ring, clip the hinges back into place and replace the bobbin. Make sure that the hum of the bobbin fits into the recess of the hook ring and clip back into place. Remember to put your free arm cover back as well. Winding the bobbin. I have an empty bobbin and that's a problem. Draw thread from the spool. Insert the thread through one of the holes in the bobbin from the inside to the outside. Hold it and make sure that it's steady. Guide the thread around the winder thread guide. Next, what I'm going to do is put the bobbin on the bobbin winder spindle, clip it into place, and push it to the right. With the free end of the thread held in your hand, depress your foot control. Stop the machine when it has made a few turns and cut the thread close to the hole in the bobbin. Depress your foot control again to continue winding. When the bobbin is fully wound, it will stop automatically. Return the bobbin winder to its original position by moving the spindle to the left and cutting the thread. Replace the bobbin in the bobbin case. Pull the thread into the bobbin case. Draw the thread underneath the tension spring and into the delivery eye. Leave about 14 centimeters of free thread. Close the hook cover and replace the free arm cover. Threading the machine. To thread your machine, make sure you've placed your spool on the spool pin with the thread coming from the back of the spool. You're going to pull the thread into the thread guide. I do recommend that for this motion, you use two hands. Draw the thread down into the tension area and then around the check spring holder. If you come up and there's no way to go, release the take up lever to its highest position by turning the balance wheel towards you, always towards you. Firmly draw thread up and through the take up lever from right to left. You'll be able to feel the tension here. Draw thread down the slip into the needle bar thread guide. Lastly, thread the eye of the needle. You may have to cut the thread with a pair of sharp scissors for easier threading. We do not advise you ever lick or wet your thread.
winding the bobbin thread. Now that we've thread our machine, we'll be winding up the bobbin. We have our bobbin thread on the left and our needle thread in front of us. Always make sure that your presser foot is raised while you wind your bobbin. Hold the needle thread lightly with your left hand and turn the balance wheel slowly towards you with your right hand until the needle goes down and continue turning the take up lever until it is at its highest position. Lightly pull up the needle thread to form a loop with the bobbin thread. For assistance, you can use a pair of scissors to help you pull the bobbin thread up and out. Changing the needle. In the instance we need to change the needle, this is how it's done. Firstly, remove your foot to make space for your fingers. Use the tool supplied with your sewing machine to unscrew your needle clamp screw. Hold the needle with one hand and turn the needle clamp screw towards you or anti-clockwise. The needle will come out very easily so make sure that you're holding it. To replace the needle, firstly make sure that you have the right needle. Needles have a rounded side and a flat side. The flat side always faces away from you. Hold the needle in place. and turn the needle clamp screw away from you or clockwise. Tighten the clamp as tightly as you possibly can. Replace the foot. And you're done. Stitching. What we're going to do now is show you an example of a straight stitch and how you do the stitch selection. This is where I changed my stitch, and there's a nice guide printed on the machine as well. Before you start sewing, you want to make sure that your machine has been threaded and that your thread is hanging off the back of the machine. It's a great tip to use the grating on the sewing plate or on your foot to guide you. To help you position your material, you're going to bring your foot down. Always start on top of the fabric. As a rule, we don't start back here. And you must always be able to see your fabric through your foot. Put your foot down and start stitching by pressing down on your foot control. You don't want to rush your sewing. Make sure that you're guiding your fabric. Not too much pressure, but also don't let it go. You're simply guiding it through. When you're done, always make sure that your needle has been put back into the highest position. If you need assistance, turn your balance wheel. Lift your fabric, pull to the side, and cut your thread. I'm now going to show you how to do a reverse or a reinforcement stitch. We've already done a straight stitch, but now we're going to do a straight stitch and reverse it or reinforce it this time. Bring your foot down, make sure that you're stitching or starting on top of your fabric. And once again, you'll be using the gratings on this plate as a guide. Make sure your foot is down and you can start sewing. When you want to reinforce, you're going to use the reverse button or function. Pull down, release. Pull down, release, and this will reinforce your sewing. So basically what it does is it does a double back on the stitch in order to reinforce it. Lift your foot, make sure that your needle is always in the highest position. Pull your fabric back, around, and cut your thread. I'm now going to be demonstrating how to do a zigzag stitch. So I'm going to use the guide on the machine. I'm going to correlate the number of the stitch to the number of the dial. You can see the zigzag stitch starts at a wide angle and you're actually able to turn in order to make it finer or thinner. 
So once again, we're going to start on top of our fabric. We're putting down our foot and we're going to be guiding our fabric through. Not pushing, not pulling, and not applying any pressure. Put your foot down and start sewing. Once you're done, make sure the needle is once again in the highest position. Use your balance wheel if you need to. Pull the fabric back to the side and cut. And there you have a zigzag stitch. We're now going to have a look at our special stitches that come with your expression 889. First things first, you'll notice that they're in a different color. There's a smaller wheel at the bottom here labeled SS or special stitch. So let's say you were turning from a tension of 2.5. You're going to turn your wheel until you feel it click. Do not go all the way to the end. If you do, turn back ever so slightly. You'll feel it click into place. Again, we're starting on top of our fabric. We're going to put our foot down. We've already selected our stitch and we're going to start sewing. Pull the fabric back to the side and cut. And there we have our finished stitch. Happy sewing!